What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more EOS R5C tips and tricks. So in the last video we talked about orienting ourselves with the menu settings for controlling how the camera deals with sensor sensitivity when you are using the ISO sensitivity mode. This time we are going to talk about doing the same thing using the gain settings. So if you're not familiar with gain, that is a completely different way of looking at the way the sensor sensitivity works that unfortunately has some positives or fortunately has some positives and unfortunately it has a layer of confusion if you're not really prepared for it. So to start this off, I want to talk about ISO versus gain selection or the ISO gain selection setting so that we can get the camera working in gain mode. So this is on the camera setup to menu page. In fact, all of the settings I'm going to be talking about this video are in the camera setup to menu page. And the setting we're looking for is ISO slash gain. And this selects which mode the camera will operate in. You have two options here. First, you have ISO, which is default, is the, the selected default that Canon has enabled when you buy the camera. And the second option is gain, which is what we are going to be talking about in this video today. So in the world of ISO versus gains, what does all of this mean? Well, as I talked about in the last video, ISO values trace their origin back to film and film sensitivities. It is an absolute scale, which makes it so much easier to talk about than gains are. So I apologize. I know this video is going to be confusing to some people. It's just the way the topic is. But what an absolute scale means is that with ISOs, ISO 100 is always ISO 100. It's never something else. Further, ISOs are defined by industry standards, which means that ISO 100 on your camera should very nearly be identical to ISO 100 on some other brand of camera. So what about gains? Well, gains trace their lineage back to video cameras and video has always been an electronic process. It never had a chemical film based origin. And because it's an electronic process, when engineers start talking about electronics and making things brighter, they're talking about amplification, and then they're talking about gains, and then they're measuring it in decibels, and then we get all kinds of confusing things. You'll know what I'm talking about this if you've ever tried to really understand what's going on in audio recording, which also uses decibels to measure the relative volumes. So, I, or gains as they are being measured with decibels, it's a relative scale. What this means is that instead of having absolute uh, ISO 100 sensitivity means X and everything that says it's ISO 100 is going to be that sensitive, well, that's not the case anymore. First of all, it means that we're talking about everything with respect to a reference level. So there is a zero decibel reference point that corresponds to an equivalent exposure level or ISO value in this case that all of our other measurements or other levels are measured from. It also means that the level that that reference point is, is not necessarily fixed in place. So if you're used to audio or if you know audio equipment and you remember DBU and DBV, the two analog of volume measurements, they use completely different reference values, but they have the same size steps. The same thing is happening on these cameras because of the different uh, base sensitivities of the sensor. Now, one final thing you need to remember is that six stops or six dB equals a one stop difference in brightness or sensitivity. So six stop or six dB, six decibels equals one stop. Now to make this all even more confusing and convoluted, gains are not codified by a industry standard, at least not any that I can actually find. They vary from camera to camera and manufacturer to manufacturer. And even looking at Canon's older cinema cameras that also support gains, they have different reference points that they work from. Now the good news is, is that if you're shooting with an R5C, a C70, a C300 Mark III, or C500 Mark II, so basically Canon's current crop of cinema cameras, they all appear to use the same base ISOs or same reference points for their gains. So there's a low reference point on the R5C when your camera is set to either the auto or 
low base ISO setting, the reference point for zero decibels is ISO 200. And if you're set it, set the camera to the high uh, I, base ISO setting, then the reference point becomes ISO 800 for zero decibels which underscores one of the other points that I was trying to make here with this being a relative scale and how this can become confusing. Canon doesn't say dBL or dBH to indicate whether you're on the low scale or the high scale. They just say decibels, dB. However, as you might have noticed, eight, ISO 800 can be shown two different ways. It can be zero decibels if you have the camera set to the high base ISO setting, but you can also get to ISO 800 from the low base ISO setting if you set the camera to 12 decibels. Both of those settings, zero and 12, will give you the same uh, equivalent ISO for the exposure, but they're getting to it a different way. So like I said, this is somewhat more confusing and complicated than just talking about ISOs. So that brings me to the first setting, or first setting we need to talk about at least, which is the base ISO. And as I said in the last video, the R5C's sensor uses multiple base ISOs. Some people call this dual gain, some people call it dual native ISO. There's a lot of marketing terms for this, and in fact there's underlying tech for how this is accomplished, is fairly complicated and rather cool, but we're not gonna get into talking about that here. Instead, the important thing to remember is that there are two different base sensitivities that the camera works from, and this is especially important when we're talking about gains as opposed to the last video when we talked about ISOs, because the different base ISOs or base sensitivities change where zero dB is for the gain settings on the camera. So the setting that we're looking at is base ISO. It's on the camera setup menu, page two. And as I said, it controls which gains we can access or specifically where the zero dB reference point is for the gains that we set. Of course, as with anything that affects exposure, this also affects image noise and the dynamic range that's available in your images, uh, but that's a topic for another day. So the three options here are going to be a low, base ISO, a high base ISO, and an automatic. Automatic will cause the camera to cho choose automatically between which of the two options get you to the gain that you are asking the camera for. Additionally, there is a button function available that you can directly program or that you can program one of the programmable buttons so that will directly switch between high, low, and automatic on a per button push basis so you don't have to go through menus. This is where base ISOs get a little bit complicated. If you remember in the last video, if you saw it, I mentioned that the ISO that is defined as the base ISO or that's shown in the menu as the base ISO will change depending on the gamma curve that you're using. And the same thing is true when you've got the camera set to gain. So if you're shooting in the BT709 standard or normal gamma curve, so this is basically standard 1080p footage, then your low base ISO will read ISO 160 and minus two decibels. And the high base ISO will read ISO 640 and minus two decibels. And again, these are not the same minus two decibels. They're the minus two decibels that are relative to ISO 200 in the low case and ISO 800 in the high case. For BT709 wide dynamic range, Progress, or perceptual quantization and the hybrid log gamma gamma curves, the low setting will read ISO 100 or ISO 400, six decibels, and the high setting will read ISO 1600, six decibels. And for Canon Log 3 users, the low setting will read ISO 800, 12 decibels, and ISO 3200, 12 decibels. Now, again, they're not the same, even though their decibels are listed there, those decibels are not in the same scale when you're using low or high. So what about the extended range? As the same, or the same as the camera has with the ISO settings, there is also an extended range available in gain mode as well. So you are looking for the ISO slash gain extended range setting, and there are two options here, on and off, with off being the default from Canon. Now here's where it gets complicated. 
because the extended range not only interacts with, or the normal and extended range not only interacts with the base ISO setting, but it also interacts with the normal and fine increment settings for adjusting your gains. The point, or the important point that I want to point out here is if you look with extended range turned on, so the right two columns in this chart, you will see that for the normal increment, you will have access down to minus six decibels. And for the fine increment, that will be limited to minus two. So ultimately what happens if you wanted to look at it visually is that when you have fine increment enabled, you lose the bottom end of your extension or extended range. You get the same top end, but the ability to go below the bottom of the normal range disappears. Additionally, because this is important and something you didn't have to even consider if you were shooting in ISO mode, when you have extended range enabled and you are using the automatic base ISO setting, the zero dB reference value is always ISO 200. So that explains why when you look at the extended range for the automatic setting, the maximum values are 42 to 54 decibels instead of 30 to 42 decibels like it is for either low or high base ISO settings. Yeah, I know, it's complicated. So the next thing is the gain increment. We'll find this under the ISO slash gain increment menu item on the camera. On the R5C, you have two options. Normal, which is equivalent to three decibels and is the factory default setting, and fine, which is equivalent to half a decibel, which is the alternate setting. Three decibels, remember, is equal to half a stop of a brightness adjustment. Half a decibel is equal to a twelfth of a stop of a brightness adjustment. So do remember, if you do use fine, which maybe you want to use for more precise control, I mean, that is probably the biggest reason to use the gain mode. If you do use fine, you do lose out on the bottom extended area of the extended ISO or gain range. So this brings me to ISO gain mode or auto gain control, as it would be called if you were coming to this from a professional video camera. Again, the setting on the menu is Canon's, or is ISO slash gain mode, and the options are either manual or automatic. Manual is what is set by default from the factory. Also, there is a button function available that allows you to directly switch between manual and automatic if this is something that you find yourself doing on a regular basis. You don't have to go through menus, you just hit the button. Program one of your programmable buttons to do this, hit the button, and the camera will automatically switch between the two options. Now, like with the ISO setting, the same thing applies here with respect to the automatic gain ranges. So gamma curve matters, base ISO matters, and that will define what the lower limit is. So if you're shooting in BT709 in normal or standard, so the non-wide dynamic range options, and you have your base ISO set to either automatic or low, then the lower limit for the automatic range will be ISO 160 equivalent or minus two dB in gains. If you have the camera set to the high, base ISO, which would be 640 equivalent, then your lower limit will be, again, minus 2 dB based on that high base ISO sensitivity of 640. If you are shooting in BT709 wide dynamic range, perceptual quantization, or hybrid log gamma with a base ISO set to either automatic or low, then your lower or your lower range for your automatic gain control will be the equivalent of ISO 400 in which is a six decibels or six decibels. If you have the base ISO set to high, then the lower limit will be equivalent to ISO 1600, also being six decibels on the scale. Finally, for Canon Log 3, automatic and low, your lower gain auto gain range will be 12 decibels, which would be equivalent to ISO 800. When the base ISO is set to high, then it would be 12 decibels and equivalent to ISO, uh, to ISO 3200. The top end, 
of your automatic gain range can also be limited. Now, this is going to be affected by whether you have the extended range setting enabled or not. It is not affected by whether you have the coarse or fine increment setting set or not, whether you're using 3 dB or half dB steps. In any case or all cases, you will have 3 dB increments for the limiting of the top end. And by the way, since I just realized I didn't mention it, the setting you're looking for here is limit for auto mode. It will be the last setting on the camera config two menu page, and it will be grayed out until you have enabled the auto ISO gain mode setting. Before I wrap this up, I wanna talk about one last thing, which is going to be pretty important if you're shooting using gains and you're measuring with, uh, or using a light meter or outside the camera to measure your scene brightnesses. So most light meters, at least mine, which is a Siconic, I think 308X something or other, don't have the ability to set a gain mode. They're going to only give you ISOs. So you will need to know roughly how to convert from ISOs on a light meter to gains if that is what you're uh, working with. So there's a couple of things you need to know. First of all, you need to know what the actual reference point or level is. So this is why I keep talking about what zero dB equivalent is equivalent to. So for the automatic or low base ISO setting, zero dB is equal to ISO 200. For the high base ISO setting, zero dB is equal to ISO 800. Then you need to know that for every stop above or below that base ISO that your light meter is telling you, you have to apply a six decibel shift. Additionally, every third stop is a half decibel or is two decibels and every half stop is three decibels. So real quickly, let's look at an example of this kind of conversion. Uh, I'm gonna be going from a gain on the camera to figuring out what ISO I should put into a light meter. So the question here for this example is what is the equivalent ISO if the gain is set to 32 decibels and I am using the high base ISO setting on the camera? So the first thing we need to do is divide 32 decibels by six because we need to know how many stops away the setting is from the reference value of zero dB. And that works out to be five and a third. The second thing we need to know is what the reference value is. So what is zero dB in ISOs? And because we are shooting with the high base ISO setting, that is ISO 800. To figure out what equivalent or what the equivalent ISO the camera is shooting at for the gain that we have set, you're going to take the base ISO of 800 and you're going to add five and a third stops to that, which is going to get you ISO 32,000. So how does that? Well, 800 plus one stop is 1600, then 3200, then 6400, then 12,800, then 25,600. So that's five stops. Then a third stop on top of that gets us to ISO 32,000. So, as I said, gains are complicated. Maybe not something you want to use unless you absolutely are a pro at what you're doing or coming to this from the video world or really need to fine tune the exposure coming out of your camera. However, if you do use them, they can be quite powerful due to that very fine precision. So if you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.